Well, hello everyone. Today, we're troubleshooting. So, as you guys hopefully know, I have 20-something earth boxes and city pickers all on the watering system, albeit slightly modified, that earth box makes. I have a hose over here that has a splitter, but the splitter right here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say corroded, uh, Maybe it's Home Depot's faulty parts. I don't know. This is the second splitter that I've had um, from them. Uh, but I think it has to do with the replumbing and the um, pressurizer that they put in uh, over here. I know that I was able to figure out how to get the non-earth box automatic watering system set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do with a timer like I did on the side of the house. So I'm gonna get that set up to run in conjunction with these boxes so that we can have some watering automatically running to these green stocks. So I got the same kit, plus I have you know some loose pieces and stuff, but I'm gonna be setting up this rain bird, like the same one we have on the side of the house. And then this is the starter kit that I got, mostly because it has the connectors and stuff that you need for the hose and whatnot and the pressurizer for a reminder this is the side of the house that we have all set up on the rainbird system so we have one two three four city pickers one earth box root and veg and then two just regular planters that are in here we we have a two-way martha stewart splitter the rainbird timer and a hose that has water running through it at all times so, so we can rinse the dogs and whatnot I know it works. It's possible. Guys, I don't know why I'm whispering, but there is a giant yellow swallowtail. Like, not the regular ones. One of the giant ones over there. Oh, okay, I know we're supposed to be talking about irrigation, but oh my god, you guys. Oh, oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, don't make any sudden moves, guys. Okay, that just like fuels my fire even more because I always have, I'm lucky to always have the monarchs floating around, but that swallow, the swallowtails are my favorite. And then I so rarely get to see the big yellow ones, the giant ones. So I'm so excited. And that means that hopefully my plan is working. Besides all the pollinator plants, I pretty much have like this tower mostly dedicated to food for the swallowtails. So it's really important to me that I get this one rigged up first. All right, so we got the splitter in. We have the earth box in, or the system for this. It's dripping a little bit, but not as much as it was before. I have water running through it. Every time I added a piece on, I tested to make sure the water was flowing. So I added this timer on, ran the water added this um pressurizer on and ran the water added this piece on ran the water and it made sure it went through the tube uh with just a forced water in so i ran it it's, a, it's all spiraled because it comes in um the tubing like this so that's gonna relax with the heat so i have it like bricked it down uh so nobody trips over right here and i have it running through the middle but i just wanted to show you guys so you know so 25 feet might sound like a lot, but I had enough to run there, through here, and down to the end over here. And I only, like I have to put a connector in here. Like this is it, like this is as far as it goes. So I think they have a whole bunch extra, about a hundred foot roll um, previously. So that's gonna help support this stuff over here. Just showing you guys this part really quick. I dug. A little bit of a trench and used some uh, of the metal stakes to help keep the irrigation tubing down. I did have to dig this up a little bit. It's been buried over the years and this is also uh, this part of the lawn here is also the lowest point of the lawn. So look at all those butterflies. Uh, so when it rains all the water kind of congregates and pools here and this is always the first part to flood. So I buried it a little bit lower knowing that it's going to come back down. I am trying to be really careful as I'm picking each layer up and thank goodness I have been because look what I just found. Our first spotted swallowtail chrysalis which is really exciting. I love taking care of them but you know this year I just I don't I don't have the bandwidth and 
ability to do it safely um, and hygienically. So I thought, you know, that the least I could do is go crazy and put a plant their plants outside. I'm so glad I did. I'm getting ready to do the first irrigation on the first tier. And I just wanted to show you guys before I start, I think it's really important that you have your bin ready to go. I watered it to help try and get some of these ants out. I put, I topped off some new um, potting mix just on the top where it kind of compacted over time. I put a little pop of color, this impatient in, and I'm gonna be filling in some of the spots with seeds after the irrigation is in because I don't want to disrupt them once they're in. But I put a little bit of fertilizer in the center part where it's not next to any direct roots. And then I covered it with, so like I said, some fresh um, pawning mix just so it has a little pop of nutrients. But highly recommend doing this um, because think about it when you're going to have the irrigation set up, you're, I mean, you're in Florida or anywhere that doesn't really have snow, you're probably going to be leaving these up for a while. So you're not going to necessarily be breaking them down uh, a lot. So it's good to give them nutrients when you can. So just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Just kicked off the second test for the first tier. If you guys uh, want to know how to do it on these, you just hit water now. And I just let the time, it defaults to 10 minutes. And I just hit 10 minutes because you can just as easily come over and hit cancel watering. All right. So the test is running. This is how I did it. So I have one um i guess entrance if you will one pocket that has the tubing coming up we're essentially making a giant circle here so i put one of the stakes in here and then i put our t connectors in and then there's little um drippers and you can put in whatever size you want uh you can see my first how i did it and i i what i liked on the second half is what I was doing is essentially you're just cutting and attaching the T-barbs just for the main shoots and then you go back in later and then you cut these for the drippers afterwards so you can position them exactly how you want. So I didn't do it the first part but then I learned really quick. This is shooting out a lot of water because we're going to put the next set of hose to go up to the next tier. All right, I just got the next tier started and I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. So we have this one coming on a tier one going up here. We have it on the bottom of one of these stakes that come with the irrigation kit. And then just kind of going with the flow of the curls in the tube. Trying to build it uh, on site like that was fine. It just, there was definitely ways to streamline it. So what I'm gonna do is just pre-make the, uh, this part like the part that goes to each of the little plugs ahead of time and then that way it's easier to use the natural uh curve of the uh spiralized tube the tube that's been you know it's all um kind of molded this way when they package it so that also kind of mimics the shape here so if you have enough time and patience and you're not like pretty much having heat stroke outside in the summer uh, this is is actually a perfect shape to go in these green stalks and keep that curvature. So at this point we got six of the T barbs on and they fit and line up pretty well in here. Not exact but perfect. Or pretty close. And we've worked with the curvature of the uh, irrigation tubing to help me get uh, less resistant to pop up over here. And then we were also able to make sure that while we're figuring out the curve, we can have the T-barb portion that goes to the individual pockets facing outwards. So we have that all ready to go. And we, we're gonna leave the ends open so we can have the tube that connects the next, um, the, either the layer below or the layer above. And then I've gone over here and pre-cut six little pieces of tubing and put the emitters on it. And then those, just slide right on. Okay, so some modifications are made. I left the timer and existing connections. I just added an extra split because I ended up having, um, actually I did it over here. I ended up right here, you can see, I ended up having to run a secondary line and I'll tell you guys why. Because this is quarter inch tubing and so, between being split between 
the two green stalks plus the two bins over there and having to go up there just wasn't enough water running through the lines and i know that because i had green stock number one um our tan one done and it was running fine and then i noticed as i added more tears on here onto green stock number two that i um sorry i just realized this is not on all the way i think no i think it is uh with green stock number two the water pressure was at high enough so both this tier and that tier as the further up you went you really weren't getting a lot of water drippage and the top tiers were pretty much getting almost nothing not nothing but not next to nothing and part of that could be because with tier two i did an experiment because this is mostly potatoes uh and they require a little bit more water in my experience uh especially with the summer heat so i put in uh the two gallon per hour which they don't run for an hour they only run for like 15 minutes or so 20 minutes but that's these red ones whereas the layers without potatoes get the one gallon per hour uh, ratio so i think that water or change in water uh extra water going out probably didn't do us any favors but nevertheless i ran a secondary line over here so there's one dedicated for each green stock and that has made a big difference. I just want to show you guys how easy it was for me to test this. So this already ran uh, for 20 minutes. Uh, but you can just press water now and say, okay, 10 minutes. Which we won't let it run for 10 minutes. But just, this is how I like testing it. It's really convenient. So it kicks on. I can hear it flowing through those okay. I know those two bins are getting enough water uh, for now at least. And then... It starts flowing over here and it does take a minute because it's you know it's got to go through all of these tubes plus all the way up but this is why i told you guys definitely check them as you put them on uh each layer make sure there's water coming out all of the connections are good uh that's what we want to see we see this layer they're they're getting water oh hey caterpillars let me see your caterpillar friends there's a guy here there's a guy here yeah, they're pretty chubby little guys. So there's water coming out. Not um, like it's interesting. This one has more water dripping. And then obviously as we go up, it's still dripping. Just not as much. Which, you know, it could be a connection. Like it needs to be twisted a little bit. I found if you twist them, sometimes that changes it. Um, I'm still troubleshooting. But for the most part, I wanted to just show you guys how great the system that I've been working on is. Uh, I've seen a lot of growth like these uh, squashes popped up really quick things that were kind of getting multi are starting to come back so I can definitely see a lot of improvement I know it's helping so I definitely recommend you guys give this a go and tailor it to your own garden I will say if you are doing something with multiple green stalks either you're gonna have to plan on running extra line like I did or you can try and get the half inch tubing and run that so there's more water flowing in general and then have it split into quarter inch tubing. I was just trying not to have an extra expense. And so I just, I was like, well, I have, a, you know, I bought 100 feet uh, of the tubing for the quarter inch size, so I might as well use it. I will say, tips and tricks wise, um, pre cutting these in each layer as needed ahead of time really a game changer it saved a lot of time i custom did the first one so i was new we're trying to figure out how it worked this sucker went together way quickly way quickly because i pre-cut them ahead of time and you just measure out how much you want the spacing to be and then all you got to do is remember for the last tier uh you instead of putting the t-splitter in you just put uh the one like one to one end and that's all i did and you probably could have just let this be a little bit longer and put the uh, tubing in but just for formalities and to keep it even when I was counting I just put this one connector in um, but that's totally optional so we'll see how this goes in the past you guys have seen me grow sweet potatoes or try to grow sweet potatoes and I've actually had pretty good luck in the green stock in the past but in Florida heat it's really 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 hot so guys I hope this has been helpful for you to learn how to put in your own 
watering system automatically triggered on a timer for your green stocks, whether you have one, two, ten, I think this could work on larger scales if you use the right size tubing. I'm always happy to answer questions. I will leave links down below to where I got stuff and other places you can find things um, for ease. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this helpful and ask questions. I'll do my best to answer. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.